Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Monday, February 1st. I'm Wayne Pratt. R.A.O. Benson takes over as president and CEO of the International Institute of St. Louis today. He sees the current divide over immigration policy as an opportunity to help Americans better understand the immigrant experience. And when they come to our shows, they're finding a home. They're finding something that they can build and protect for the next generation that comes after them. St. Louis Public Radio's Marissa Ann Lewis-Thompson speaks with the new leader of the International Institute of St. Louis in just a few minutes. St. Louis County is extending a curfew on restaurants, bars, and banquet centers. Starting today, they are now allowed to stay open until 11 at night. They had been forced to shut down an hour earlier because of COVID-19 restrictions. County Executive Sam Page says restaurants and bars have proper health measures in place to allow them to stay open later. Our restaurant owners say this will significantly increase their reservation capacity and make it easier for them to recover from this pandemic. Page says his advisory groups are continuing to look at ways to gradually reopen the community while protecting employees and customers from exposure to coronavirus. He also says the county's Department of Public Health and SSM Health will begin vaccinating up to 4,000 first responders today. Many of them are police officers and will get the vaccine at St. Louis University Hospital. Officials in St. Clair County say a scheduling system glitch is blamed for vaccine appointment cancellation notices being sent out to hundreds yesterday. County officials say people who have an appointment originally set for today at Belle Claire Fairgrounds in Belleville should still show up at their scheduled time. The Belleville News Democrat reports appointments are scheduled for more than 500 people today. The county's health department is contacting those affected by the mistake. The fallout continues over a last-minute venue change for Missouri Governor Mike Parson's State of the State speech. As St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports, the Republican governor is upset over the GOP-controlled House leadership's decision to move the speech to the Senate. In a letter sent to GOP lawmakers, Parson accused Republican House leadership and staff of humiliating him by moving his speech last Wednesday. Top legislative leaders cited COVID-19 for the decision, but Parson contended that was hypocritical when many House members don't wear masks on the floor or during committee hearings. He called last Wednesday's confusion over the state of the state venue, quote, a purposeful and disgusting scheme to embarrass me and the office of governor. The governor's missive could have big public policy implications. Although Republicans have unified control over the legislative and executive branches of Missouri government, GOP House Speaker Rob Viscobo has immense power to scuttle some of Parson's priorities. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. A message to Viscobo's office seeking comment was not returned. The accomplishments of black Americans in the arts history, and sports will be celebrated by the St. Louis County Library this month. Its annual Black History Month program will feature online presentations. St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson reports. The library's Black History Month program will include highlights of baseball legend Satchel Paige's career and the Black Rep's presentation of Freedom Songs, the story of the African-American struggle for civil rights. There will also be a virtual program on the golden age of hip-hop. Sandy Williams chairs the library's Black History Committee. She says it's important to recognize the contributions of Black Americans. We have a rich heritage here, and it's to be celebrated. And you know, if you don't have the celebration, there is the possibility that things can be lost in history. Williams says she hopes this year's celebration will help African Americans heal after a year of loss and protest to save black lives. I'm Andrea Henderson, St. Louis Public Radio. After more than 40 years at the helm of the International Institute of St. Louis, Anna Croslin is passing the baton to a new president and CEO. R.A.O. Benson takes the helm today. He came to the U.S. from Cameroon nearly two decades ago and has committed himself to helping integrate immigrants. 
Well, Benson told St. Louis Public Radio's Marissa Ann Lewis-Thompson that he wants to start by having a conversation with the St. Louis community. To be part of building this incredible tapestry that should be the, uh, the beautiful American experience that embraces diversity of culture, that, that encourages inclusion, that fosters equality, enhances justice, and that and that it's not the the immigrant community is not looked as a community outside the St. Louis community that we're woven in. You'd spent 17 years with Junior Chamber International working with young people to better their communities. How will that work influence the work you're doing right now? In planting the seeds and working with young people, um, we were able to run a global campaign where we mobilized and engaged 4 million young people in one day to do activities around the world and sparked conversations of, uh, around the world, leading a peace, a peace match in Aleppo, Syria, that really brought an end to fighting in Aleppo. Um, and lots of other places around the world where we saw transformation take place as a, re- as a result of conversations that were sparked. So, Coming to the St. Louis community, I would not spend time having a conversation about what is wrong and how different we are and and what the divide is. That's not the conversation that I want to have. I want to paint a picture of what it would look like if we could just bridge this divide, if we could just walk together. What kind of society can we have? You mentioned a lot of imagery here, a picture, a painting. What would that painting look like? It is proven that the statistics and facts that demonstrate that diversity is a strength and that immigrants in the United States have played a significant role in, in, in development. Uh, and, and maybe not only at the, at the B, because people will think about the, the Googles of the world that are led by, by, by immigrants, But even looking at, you know, we know that this country's economy is really um, run by small businesses and and looking at the small businesses that immigrants bring to the community um, really creates jobs and opportunities for people. Um, That's it is it is a prosperous, vibrant, accepting and welcoming a community where talent comes and doesn't leave. It stays here and helps build um, this community. Well, how do you intend to build more trust within the immigrant community in the region in such a, a trying time? We may look at the divide as a challenge. I want to look at it as an opportunity. We have to find ways of communicating, of telling the immigrant story, a story that didn't start today. It's a story that started uh, centuries ago and how that story has evolved. That everybody that comes to these shores um, is looking for a home. People don't want to leave their homes, but when they do, they're certainly leaving for a reason that is beyond their control. And when they come to our shores, they're finding a home. They're finding something that they can build and protect for the next generation that comes after them. They really just want to be part of this incredible society that the world over is being admired and loved. And so they don't come here to destroy, they actually come here to construct. And I think we need to tell their stories of of how they have come and how they too have contributed to building Uh, our society, setting up small business, creating employment, and and helping build that next generation of America that really believes in, in what America is. That was R.A.O. Benson, the new president and CEO of the International Institute of St. Louis, speaking with St. Louis Public Radio's Marissa Ann Lewis Thompson. Our Maria Altman edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. 
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.